Hey, Eileen. Hello. Just making sure. Uh oh. What? Can you do? Do me. Just be quiet for one second. I will. Uh oh. Never mind. I got it. It's we're streaming live to YouTube, and it was just. It's. I just wanted to make sure, but I was getting a looping uh, audio sound. I had that the other night in a meeting that. Um, I had for another municipality, it was hysterical because all there was was an echo and everybody kept laughing. So the laughing was echoing and it just got worse and worse and worse. We had to get another number. So I'm only showing us three on here at the moment. Who's the other one besides you and me? I see Suzanne, but it doesn't look like she's connected with, uh, hold on, she's calling myself in right now. Okay. Hey. Mark? Yep. Sir? Yes. So nah, you should just jump on the meeting normally. I'm just not using video. Hello, John. Hi, Tina. Hi, Eileen. Hi, John. Hello, Eileen. How are you? Okay. Hi, Tina. Hi, guys. You have a looping audio. You got to turn it off. Which one? Uh, hold on. I'm going to hang up. Sign out real quick. Woo. Yow. Is that sound Reggie's talking about? <laughs> oh, it is looping, Rich. What the heck? Okay, well, my screen just went. All right, I gotta figure it out. Suzanne, you gotta mute your mic on your computer. I don't have a mic on my computer. I called in by phone. Can you please just sign out? We can sign you in a different one. Yeah. Thank you. IT, man. <laughs> All right, so you out? No, I can't get to it. He just put the other thing on top of it. Uh, just to let her you know, I had her on my cell phone as well. We're trying to get her later. Oh, my God, Britt. She's out now.
Uh oh, I just lost everybody. There we go. You're still here. How do I mute myself though? Click on your face. It says mute. I got it. Bottom left. Sorry about that, everyone. It took me longer to get in. All right. Uh, if I can, for just a moment, uh, for those that have joined us, uh, thank you for joining tonight's meeting. Uh, you are currently muted and cannot be heard by the board. Uh, during tonight's meeting, the public will have two opportunities to make public comment. The first one will be after the board approves the agenda. At that time, the board will take public comment on any items that are on the agenda. And that will be for just items that are on the agenda. Near the end of the agenda, after board comment, there is a second period of public comment. Uh, during that time, public comment can be made about any general items. Public comment for this meeting can be taken in one of four ways. Uh, if you have delivered public comment to the exterior drop box prior to the meeting, it would be read into the record at the appropriate time. We checked the drop box within the last 10 minutes and there was nothing in the drop box at this time. If you wait, may, wish to make a public comment and are unable to uh, figure out how to do so audio wise, uh, you can send a public comment to public comment, spelled out all as one word, public comment at Newtown Township, also spelled out, dot org. Again, that is public comment at Newtown Township, dot org. Please include your first name and first and last name and your address so we can read that into the record as well if you have, if you send a public comment that way. Uh, you can virtually raise your hand and you will be recognized. Uh, uh, we will ask that you state your name and address for the record and proceed to make your comment. If you have dialed in, you can notify staff that you wish to make a comment one of two ways. One of those is through going through the chat 
At the bottom, you will see uh, across the bottom of most people's screens. However, there are some that it comes across the top. Uh, there's a spot that's for chat. We ask that you go in into there, select panelist, and go ahead and put that in. And that would allow you to enter in the phone number from which you called in. So we know which phone number we need to unmute. Again, whatever phone number you called in from would be the phone that we would want to unmute. We'd ask that you let us know that. Also let us know your name so that we can type your name in over the phone number when we bring you up uh, in that way. Uh, again, you'll be asked to state your name and address for the record. The other option is that you could send uh, the request to public comment at newtowntownship.org, which would allow you to, uh, again, just put in there your phone number and your name so that we can acknowledge you and make sure that you get a chance to do your public comment. Uh, before we go any further, uh, Rich, I see that you've muted. I want to confirm that you have the meeting recording. The meeting is recording, yes. And so the meeting is being recorded. It is also being uh, sent live out to YouTube. Uh, if somebody wishes to watch it that way, if they're having trouble uh, through uh, the Zoom function. So, Mr. Chairman, I will turn the meeting over to you and we'll move forward. Thank you, Mr. Neese. Uh, hopefully uh, everybody's uh, staying safe and healthy. Uh, prior to this meeting, the board was in executive session in a very similar format, in a Zoom format like this, to discuss three matters. They were three legal matters. Uh, at this time, Mr. Neese, will you please call to order or call the roll? Mr. Nahn. All present. Mr. Partridge. Here. Mr. Roberts Lightcap. Here. Mr. Russo. Here. Uh, Mr. Altieri. He was. Uh, you're on mute, Mr. Altieri. I'm here. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, your solicitor and your engineer and uh, your manager are here. Thank you, Mr. Neese. Uh, at, at this time, I'd ask everybody to uh, bow your heads uh, for a moment of silence tonight. Let's keep in mind all of our uh, healthcare workers, all our medical people, everybody out on the front lines of uh, fighting this disease. Uh, you know, they are putting their lives on the line every day for us. And so let's just please keep them in our thoughts and our prayers. Okay, before us, we have this evening's agenda. I'll uh, consider a motion to approve the agenda or uh, a, a consideration of any additions, deletions, things like that. I'll make a motion to accept the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcat to approve the CD's agenda. Any further questions or discussions from members of the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is a public comment session for any items that are on the agenda. If there are any members of the general public that are on, I only actually see one, uh, and they would like to make a comment for anything on the agenda, they can do so as described by Mr. Neese. So uh, there are more. Um, we have about 15 uh, okay. out right. there. Um, I would make note that if you're doing that, I'm asking you to raise your hand, and we will start working through the list. There we go. All right, Miss Anita, I am going to put you on right now. State your name and your address for public record, please. It does not appear that she has a microphone plugged into her computer from what I am seeing on this end. Um, can you hear me better now? Yes, yes you can. Yep. Okay. 
All right. So again, Anita Burke, 3911 Woodland Drive in Newtown Square. I'm president of the Lissiter Community Association, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Lissiter Community Association Board. We are urging the Board of Supervisors to accept the request of the Lissiter HOA Board that toll to be allowed to demolish Building 48, also known as the Swamp House, and fill in the foundation with clean fill dirt as noted in our request dated March the 3rd, 2020. Both Lissiter and Toll are in agreement with this request. Maintaining the building would be a hardship on the association and it is an attractive nuisance on the property. We believe that demolishing the building is in the best interests of all members of the association and will ensure the community is safe and free from this hazard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other members, any other questions from members of the general public on any item on the agenda? I am not seeing any in the attendees list and I just confirmed that we have no additional in the email. Okay, with that, we are going to continue with the agenda then. Uh, under item eight minutes, uh, we've all had a chance to review hopefully the minutes from our last meeting. I'll entertain a motion for approval of the March 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes as written for consideration of any changes, additions, deletions. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Roberts like that to approve the minutes from our March 23rd, 2020 meeting as written. Any further questions or discussions from members of the board on this item? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on the agenda is consider approving resolution 2020-15 for local government week. Uh, Mr. Partridge, you have a copy of this resolution? Yes. Could you please okay, read? Resolu yep. Resolution 2020-15, local government week, April 20th to 25th. 2020. Whereas local government is the backbone of our democracy and the bedrock of our political system. And whereas Pennsylvania local government is the epitome of a grassroots operation and local government elected officials are ordinary citizens who choose to serve their community. And whereas more than 12 million Pennsylvania residents rely on the services and facilities provided by local government, including townships, which provide essential services such as maintenance of roads and streets, sewage management, police and fire protection, local planning and zoning, waste management and recycling, and parts and recreation. And whereas Pennsylvania's residents rely upon the dedication of these local governments in meeting many of the health, welfare, and public safety needs of the community. And whereas Pennsylvania residents rely upon the dedication of these local governments in meeting many of the health, welfare, and public safety needs of the community, Okay, we said that. Uh, whereas our local governments are a testimony to liberty, freedom, and the right to elected self-government, and whereas local government week focuses attention on the need for strong, independent, and active government in Pennsylvania, it recognizes the valuable contributions made by residents serving their communities. Therefore, be it resolved that the township recognizes April 20th to 25th, 2020, as local government week in Pennsylvania. And that's my motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion is made by Supervisor Parker, seconded by Supervisor Russo to approve resolution 2020-15, recognizing local government week. Uh, any other questions from members of the board on this resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, I guess it's unfortunate that it has to occur during these trying times but certainly uh, just a, a big shout out to all of our uh, employees, to our manager, of course, uh, our, and everyone that's putting in the extra time in these frankly scary times to uh, keep the government running. Uh, and, and just a, a big thank you. And, and we're very pleased and honored on behalf of the board to recognize you uh, during this week. Well, we thank you for recognizing the staff. Um, they have been working really hard. So thank you. Item 10 is a presentation uh, on the uh, uh, from the Parks and Rec Board or Parks and Rec. Uh, Mr. Neese? 
Yeah, hold on, give me a second. We need to. And Wayne, you are also going to have to unmute your microphone. Okay, I did. <clears throat> okay. Wade, you are on. Okay, so um, we have the uh, the agenda. And if, and if you just want to go to page two, um, there's a mission statement and vision statement and value goals and objectives. And so we're asking the board to uh, approve this for us. We'd like to post it on our website. It would kind of be a living document and we'd review it every year and update it uh, accordingly. And then we have uh, our roster, which uh, there's there's eight uh, of us that are normally there. And um, George Sharitz represents the township normally. So he speaks with um, Ed Partridge on an ongoing basis and provides input to, to George, who provides it to us. Um, but the, the eight of us have been together for, I guess, about four years now. We, we work very well together. We do an awful lot. Um, of stuff for the community and I'm um, really happy to be associated with them. And uh, recently we've decided to give out, uh, and this was after discussions with uh, George Sharitz, um, we would uh, accept stewardship of, of a park. And so we just uh, got all the neighborhood parks. We assi made assignments to those and uh, we're supposed to visit them as often as we can and just report back on their general condition and you know provide any uh input that you might have gotten from neighbors uh any improvements how big or small they are um sometimes just another uh, set of eyes on there and then provide that feedback back to george and then uh, once a year we would um, change parks so uh, just to have a fresh set of eyes on us and we have uh recently uh canceled all of our community events that we've scheduled. We work pretty hard on getting these together. It's a shame, but you know, next year is going to be a great opportunity for us. So we've gone ahead and uh, canceled everything. The, uh, the stuff in September might occur, uh, you know, depending on what happens. So we'll, we'll leave that open, but as of right now, it's canceled. And then yoga in the park, we're, we're hoping to possibly uh, put a Zoom meeting together for that. Um, and have D Dalai Lama, uh, the uh, yo yoga instructor from uh, Dalai Lama, uh, do that on Zoom and then have residents uh, Zoom into it. And the Greer Park Master Plan update. Um, we, we met one time. Um, they gave us an initial assessment, including the, uh, the number of uh, uh, local animals that are in the park. It was pretty surprising. They, he seemed to think he found the coyote den back there, whether it was active or not, he was not sure. Um, and there's some fox dens back there that we all know about. Um, so th there's a lot of ecological problems in the park. And what we're hoping is that um, we can utilize those to get funding from the state and, and improve them, uh, clean the streams up and the, and the property itself. Uh, there's a lot of grants available. They're going to write one and they're going to help us uh, give us some direction as to where there might be some other funding available for that. Um, they're struggling with public input and how they're going to approach that because of where we're at right now. But they seem to be uh, pretty good. And I, I think that they'll, they'll handle this well. Steve's working with them and we hope to have that satisfied so that we have a lot of public input before we go ahead and uh, publish any kind of master plan, which we hope will be in the uh, spring of 2021. And then that grant we could use, hopefully the funds will be available the next September for a final design and or the build process. And just because of where we're at, we, you know, we've, we're kind of trying to figure out what, what we're gonna do um, over the next six months to 18 months. And, so we're going to try and take a look at some of the parks and, and maybe doing some enhancements on them, cleaning them up, uh, just general maintenance and that kind of stuff, um, small improvements. And 
George has also uh, expressed an interest in the trails because they're receiving a lot of uh, use these days. So we're going to try and start taking a look at those and how maybe we can make some small improvements there. Um, and then we're also looking at the bocce ball court uh, at Drexel Lodge Park still. So Marple's uh, Public Works put one in at uh, Veterans Park. I think we lost, wait, hold on a second. Hello? You still Hello. there? We'll have a presentation for the Board of Supervisors. Um, Wade, I think we lost you when you were talking about Marple. And okay, yes, yeah, the, what uh, so we've tr we're trying to reach out to the Marple uh, Public Works and the gentleman that had the experience on putting that cord in and would have all the knowledge um, has not gotten back to us yet. So I'm not sure if that's something that George might want to take over and see if he can reach out to that guy. Um, I don't know, you know how we would uh, communicate. Hopefully we could do a Zoom meeting with him and try and pick his brain a little to help us get to get a better estimate together. And um, so at least we know what, you know, what we're up against. Hopefully we can get some corporate funding or uh, small business funding um, from the community to help us offset any kind of cost with that. But we would, we would do a presentation before we did anything and, and let you guys tell us wh uh, where to go, wh and which direction to go in. And then, so going forward, you know, as far as providing recreation for the community, we're, we're unsure of how to, how to do this. Um, so we're looking at possibly a web page. We, we had one meeting on Zoom with Parks and Rec and we, and we discussed this of having some type of web page where we could put videos, um, you know, maybe we could do videos of our local parks so that people could, you know, at least know what they can visit when, when they're open. Um, and, and some links to some other, you know, regional, the Franklin Institute, the Red Am Museum, the Art Museum, so, um, Longwood Gardens, whatever it might be. And then public service announcements we'd like to put there, um, some possible music links to, there's, there's some pretty good uh, online music uh, concerts going on. We could link to them. And then hopefully the community can provide some videos as far as what they're, what they're doing to keep busy. Um, and help us with that. So if the township could set up a web page for us that we can link to and possibly use their YouTube channel to record on, and if someone could be a point person for approvals on, on anything we put on there, um, that would really help us out. But we're, we're kind of struggling in which direction to go in um, moving forward. Uh, Steve, that's it. Something that we could do, uh, you know, make room for them on our website? Absolutely. We actually talked about that at their meeting that we would do that, work with Rich and, um, you know, really bring in the uh, YouTube possibility. Uh, you know, I, I know they even suggested, you know, maybe some training on different sports. Like, uh, I think they even had suggested something that somebody might do how to play uh disc golf or you know some things like that and so we're going to work on that with them uh one of the challenges we have right now the youtube part is not the issue but the zoom is part and it'll be under my report down i i think we probably need to expand our zoom account uh to allow for additional things going on at the same time uh we've been trying they've been the parks and rec group have been trying to plan some things but during the day, sometimes we're on using Zoom, trying to have meetings that we're having. Um, and right now we only have one, one, we can only have one meeting at a time. So one of the things that's under my report would be us expanding the Zoom account uh, to allow multiple meetings. Um, and uh, so anyway, but yeah, they're, we're gonna definitely open up their webpage for them. Uh, we've even, like I said, we've talked about giving them some Zoom access so they can do the, the, the yoga, they can do some different things like that uh, during this time. Hey, hey uh, Steve, this is Ed. Um, 
Are you able to go, could you go back to the, the vision mission uh, page of the presentation? Okay. I think it was the second page and, and, and I want to, you know, just take a moment and say thanks to, to Wade and um, the Park and Rex Board for the great work uh, that they do um, within the community. Um, so, uh, uh, Steve, I, have you had a chance yet to, um, to review the uh, mission and uh, the vision statement, the mission and, and the um, uh, values, goals and objectives uh, to see if it's consistent with the overall uh, vision, mission, objectives of the township? I don't know if you've had a chance yet or for for sure I would say the mission statement was written with that in mind we talked about that it's it it's uh uh it definitely fits with kind of where our goal is on our mission statement their vision statement um our vision statement is still kind of waiting for you all to uh, do approval when we do the strategic plan so it's a little bit ahead of that as are the values goals and objectives but I, I think as a whole, it's very similar to where we wanna be. Um, and it may be once we look at the strategic plan that we would maybe make some minor modifications, but I, don't, I think that's what they would be. Okay, uh, the reason I asked that question is I, I was um, considering a, a motion um, for the board to approve that if you felt it was con consistent. I, so let me ask you this, it's maybe, I, I mean, no, Either. I think it's appropriate for you to do that, and okay. we can always go back and make adjustments. Yep. Okay. Then, um, like to make a motion to accept the the vision, mission, statements, also the values, goals, and objectives as uh, as presented by the Park and Recreation Board. Um, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Altieri to approve the vision statement, mission statement, and value goals and objectives uh, as presented by the Park and Recreation Board. Any further questions, uh, comments from members of the board? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, well done, Wade, and, and your group. Uh, you already yep. commended. This is a very good uh, approach. Uh, I, I like the presentation. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. All right. With that, we will move on to the reports. I don't know if uh, who's on, but uh, we have in our package reports from Chief Lana. If Chief has any comments, if he's even on. If not, that's fine. Um, likewise, his report from Chief Everloff. I don't know if Chief Everloff is on. If he has any comments, please jump up and say so. Uh, we have a report from George Sharitz. Anything uh, to add, Mr. Sharitz, if you're on? Uh, similarly, a report from uh, Andy Redsek uh, from Codes. Uh, I don't know if Andy's on, but anything to add? Now's the time to speak. We have a report from Mr. Lafayette in the finance department. I know Mr. Lafayette is online. Mr. Lafayette, are you anything to report? No, and I just want to report that uh, none of the other uh, reports have raised their hand to make a comment. I just saw something from Doug Averloff that said he had no comments. Something just popped up on my screen. So. All right. That's great. So uh, that's good. OK, nothing further to report what Doug says. OK. Um, Eileen, is there anything you need uh, you have to add to your report? Nothing to add. Great. That brings uh, us back. Mr. Chairman, real quick, I have a question for Eileen. Um, I noticed that in her report, she did mention um, that she sent to us the drainage complaint proposals. Um, she sent them, yeah. as noted in her report, on March 9th, which is also the same day that Suzanne sent them to us. I know originally we were scheduled to speak about this at the March meeting, but that was the first Zoom meeting that we had. Um, and it was a much more condensed agenda. Um, so, you know, now that we've had a month uh, as supervisors to kind of go through them, I think it's just appropriate now to not let this kind of lag on anymore. Um, I personally would be in favor for us to start having a discussion on these three proposals, if not be able to move forward with, a, with, um, with recommending one or even all three of them. Um, but I just think that the fact that, you know, and I understand the circumstances and the situation that we're in, but I don't want them to lag anymore. And if we can, um, to begin acting on it now, I don't know if Steve or Eileen have anything that they want to add. Um, proposals were, you know, like I said, sent out to us 
they were pretty cut and dry for us to review. And I think that it would be in the interest of the residents to start acting on it. I, I, I think um, I personally looked at them and I feel that we should approve them and move forward with the, 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 the uh, three items. And again, it's just telling us what needs to be done. So it's not that we're authorizing the work to correct the problems. It's just right. trying to get the problems and see what the solutions are, which I think are long overdue. Mr. Nice, uh, I know these are unbudgeted. Do we have budget to cover this? Well, I think that, um, you know, obviously that during this time that we'll need to look at finances, but I think that we could go ahead and pursue getting the work, the, the engineering part down, getting an idea of what it is so that if for nothing else, we can make sure that we have it budgeted in the 2021 budget if we can't get it done this year. So uh, I would definitely think that there's a benefit to moving forward. Uh, this may be something that actually takes a couple years when we start looking at these projects, because I think a couple of the projects may get rather large. Um, but I do think that if we don't start getting our hands around it, we won't know how to put priorities on it. Go moving forward, I guess some of these projects could uh, help us with our, uh, I mean, our MS4 obligations too, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Uh, the, Eileen, do you want to answer that? The, the proposal for Glendale would be uh, an immediate improvement for MS4 purposes um, once implemented uh, because the, those issues are more what the um, road conditions are that are depositing sediments and fines and just general road on pr uh, private property. Um, so that one would be an immediate. The other two um, will certainly have MS for impacts because of how intertwined they are, but they are primarily to figure out conveyance because of um, flooding and uh, problems with just control of stormwater. Okay. And I should have probably said this um, for those who are listening. Um, the four, um, excuse me, the three proposals are for the areas of Newtown Heights, um, for Glendale, and then the Tyson, Horton, Lewis, and Cayley um, neighborhoods as well. I, I guess Mr. Altieri or Mr. Russo, do either one of you want to offer a motion then? Hey, hey John, John before, before that, um, let me just make one comment. I mean, if we're about to put a motion um, on the table to approve things that could have a, a budget impact or substantial budget impact. In light of the current situation, um, you know, with our budget and um, you know, impact to you know to revenues and expenses uh, during the crisis, um, maybe uh, we might need to take a, a further look at at budget impact here before we uh, move forward. Um, just a suggestion and maybe um, ask for some opinion from Steve Neese since he manages the budget for us. Uh, Leonard, would you do me a favor, just read off the dollar value of each one of those three, please? I, I don't have them right in front of me. Yeah, I, 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 I have, think you have it on you. Yeah, I do. Um, the Glendale, I'm sorry, the, the Heights development, the total, Estimate was $8,400. For the Tyson, Horton, Lewis, and Cayley development, it was $14,500. And for Glendale Road, it was $4,700. And this is for engineering, correct? I uh, basically studying each area and developing both um, a plan to move forward and preliminary estimates. And um, when we approve these proposals, how is the fee structure, how, how do we pay out as, as you complete? Is it a percentage that you complete a plan and then we pay on that contract? Um, as work, as, as when you're finished, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, if they take longer because of whatever reasons we have to you know, discuss things at meetings or things, like that, we typically bill on a monthly basis. Um, 
and on a time and materials basis. So we would um, build progress and certainly um, total fee would be completion. Does that answer your question, Tina? Yeah, I think so. Cause just for step, if, if we do run in cause of the budget, if we do run into something, we can always pull back on one of the, one of these three, is that correct? Um, I work at your direction, yes. Okay. If I could, um, would the board consider us pri prioritizing these? I understand why we would do all three and I definitely think we would. Um, I, I think that what it might be helpful is to um, actually tackle put them in an order. Uh, that way, what you're approving, we know we'll do it with understanding that we might overlap as we move forward. Uh, but they, so they basically, um, the goal being that you would start seeing some results pretty quickly on one. And then that I'm assuming the one at Glendale would be the quickest one to do. Is that correct, Eileen? Um, well, Double check this, the Glendale one was where I had proposed obtaining um, field survey information. Yeah. Because as, as you recall, uh, prior conversations were that we thought this was a perfect date for the low volume road project. Yep. So we thought the study should involve the actual field survey so that we were basically ready to move into construction. Um, once hopefully those grant dollars were obtained. So yeah. let, let me ask this, uh, Mr. Nisa and Eileen, does the staff or our engineer have a recommendation on how these should be ordered for the board to consider? Rather than us kicking it around, do you guys have a recommendation as to, and it could be different recommendations, as to which ones are more priority driven or which ones can be done quicker or something like that? so that we can consider that. Well, the, the Glendale project would, by, by fee and just, you know, um, effort, be able to be completed the quick, uh, providing we can get surveyors out. Because <laughs> with the government shut down, um, I don't know that they're life sustaining, so, It'd be a little while before they can get site. Um, Eileen, let me ask you, while you answer that question, I just want to make sure when we say, when, I mean, the way that I think of it, when we talk about priority, I don't want to put the easiest one as number one. I want to go with what is the most uh, in dire need to be fixed as number one, right? I just want to make sure we're using the same, the same word interchangeably here and not necessarily what's going to be the quickest one to get done um, but what is the order in terms of severity that needs to get done? Okay, all right. Well, okay. I'm sorry. So oh, you're good. Now, okay. someone has their phone on, not on mute. Um, with respect to severity, I think you could probably call it a, a tie with the Heights and Horton and Cayley. Um, and they are both the, the flooding and lack of conveyance that. Um, I referred to previously. Um, but as far as both of those as well, I, th I think just knowing the um, scale of both of those projects, the uh, resolution and then the estimates, um, I envision to be fairly high so the likelihood of them being able to be implemented immediately is a little lower. With respect to Glendale, not just because of the scope of the study, but because there is an immediate ready-made program that can fund it, I think that could get done the quickest in, in total, our study and the actual implementation. So John. Would you be opposed if we did the motion to approve all three and just and I can add verbiage in this motion that it's 
up to, you know, the, in, that in the motion will say, you know, um, uh, to address them uh, uh, in list of priority by, the, you know, the, in the opinion of the township engineer. Yeah, I, I think that's the way to, I mean, we're talking less than $28,000 and I think we at least need to have something back from our engineer that says, here's what needs to be done. Here's the roadmap moving forward and here what you need to do first, second, and third. So yeah, I, I would have no problem with that motion, but it's at the pleasure of the board. Are, the, are these projects over a period of several months? I mean, these, these three projects are not gonna be done in a month or two, correct? That's correct. So you're, not, you're gonna be billing us a portion each month for several months. And I would assume the Tyson one's gonna be probably more than several months. It could be, yes. Okay. I, I personally don't think that, I mean, however you wanna say it, Leonard, I think we should definitely get it on the radar. We should definitely get it. Yep. And again, scheduled. she can't do the work yep. right now, get it scheduled. Because some of this, if Tyson needs surveying work or whichever one needs surveying work, it can't be done right now on, you know, for this situation, but I just think we should get it approved. And no, I, I agree. If we, have to, if we have to stop the money down the road because we run into a pro bigger problem than we have today, then we stop the money and we put these projects on hold. But I, I, I think these folks are getting flooded on a, on a continuous basis. And these aren't the only flooding problems we have in town. And we've no, got to no. start addressing some of these and get a game plan that even if we're not going to tackle them to next year. I watched my neighbor's shed go down the street today, right down the street. Yeah. I wouldn't but, doubt uh, it. With that, so I'll make a motion that we accept the drainage complaint proposals for the Heights, Glendale Road, Tyson, Horton, Lewis, and Cayley neighborhoods um, to be completed um, uh, at the discretion of the township engineer. Or the township manager. Um, yeah, I guess. To be list to be completed in in or in, in, to be completed in terms of order as established by the township engineer and or township manager. Correct. Yeah, I feel better with that. Is there a second? Second. I would, can it, Do you want to put a cost in there? Yeah, I would put motion? cost in there at twenty seven thousand six hundred for the yeah. total. Yeah, correct. So not to exceed the amount as stated by the township manager, right there. So, uh, Mr. Arthur, you're okay with that addition then to the motion? The one I just made? Yes. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And Mr. Russo, you're okay with your second to that? Uh, yes. Okay. So motion was made by uh, Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Russo to approve the uh, drainage proposals from the Township Engineer for the Heights, Glendale, and the Tyson uh, roadways in the amount uh, not to exceed of $27,600. Uh, any further questions or discussions from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. There we go. Uh, I have another one. Uh, and I know we brought this up before, but the property at 501 Ellis Avenue, it's the, the, Flynn, the Flynn family with the uh, abandoned pipe that I guess was capped and or damaged when they built the Goddard School that is flooding out his backyard and his neighbor. Um, I know this is something that was discussed before. We don't need to go into a discussion about it, but Eileen and Steve, I just wanted to put it back on your radar that obviously that is continuing to get uh, um, uh, a, a worse situation uh, than when it was a few months ago when I first brought it up. So if we can get some um, movement on figuring that out, uh, that would be great. Yeah, I've at least for us at the next meeting. I have got an acknowledgement at least from the contractor. Um, just not a game plan on what we're proposing to do. I've reached out a couple times in the last two weeks, but have not heard back. Perfect. He, just, he, he reached out to me and just wanted an update. I told him that I didn't have one and that I would bring it up um, tonight. So I appreciate your work on that, Eileen. Yeah, so this very shot construction. Is this a um, drainage pipe that went through the Goddard property that they, they cut off? Yes. It was apparently a buried inlet. And when they uncovered it, they cut off the pipe and put in a new inlet to drain that spot. <clears throat> but it cut off the um, connection out to Ellis. And they didn't tell. 
Well, what recourse do we have with, with this contractor? If he's not coming to do it. I mean, it's no, been a few no. weeks. Well, he said he would come to do it, but he said what he's going to do yet. So I am hoping to coordinate with Harry as to what he found when he was um, investigating so that we can make the connection. Eileen, do you have an, do you have an idea of what should be done there? I do. I just um, am not certain the condition of the pipe that runs from Ellis, I'm not Ellis, from Elgin through the yards and then down toward Goddard. So I don't know where they would pick it up. Well, I guess the, the question I have, I guess we have to look at this, but if this was a drainage structure and pipe that was went through this property prior to their construction to drain these areas and it is rotted it's collapsed whatever it is then it's their responsibility to, to fix this right and, and and the neighbor should be sitting there getting a flooded yard while these guys determine how long until they get out there i mean this is this is you know this happens and, and typically people don't hide things they just cover them up and keep going it sounds like this person uh, didn't do the right thing. And uh, unfortunately, from what I've been able to figure out, it was a sub of the contractor that was responsible for mm -hmm. the general construction that actually did remove the pipe. So he initially had no knowledge of this as well. So I think that's why it's taken a while. They're trying to figure out between the two of them who's responsible. Okay, well, let me, let me make this real easy. The Goddard School has been open three years? Yes. We give the guy a week. And in a week, if it's not done, we hire somebody and we, and, we, and we go after him. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, this is the Goddard School can pay for this. This is their problem. They hire this yeah. contractor. This guy didn't perform properly or he, or he buried something he wasn't supposed to bury. People have to step up and do the right thing. And these people shouldn't be getting a flooded yard. And these people over there did, did a construction project with a shoddy contractor. Yeah, I, I think it's our done. action needs to be against the Goddard School. Right. Uh, because these contractors really don't have any uh, relationship with us, their relationship yeah. with the property owner. So if need be, we got to get the Goddard School involved in this and let them know what the ramifications <clears> are going <throat> to be if they don't get some action on this. I mean, why would these contractors do anything at, at our direction? needs to be at the Goddard School's direction. Well, shouldn't the, shouldn't the Goddard School be notified because they are ultimately the property owner. So they, us they, going directly to the contractor, because again, to Mike's point, we have no, they have no, you know, they have no relationship to us. I think the, I think the property owner needs to be, no, has to be they, on notice. They were. You should figure this out and not the township. Tina, this is Eileen. They were notified. That's how the process started. We went okay. to them and they forwarded it along to the contractor, which is Roshak Construction, who thought that they, they didn't do anything wrong until after he discussed with his subcontractor who did the removal. Okay, and I understand had, now. Okay, okay, I, okay, but I think we either Joe or Rich, I think Joe or Rich have to put the Goddard School on notice that this they're gonna have a week to do this. And I think that's more than reasonable if you already gave them two weeks notice. Listen, it's getting rainy. April's a rainy month. These people should not have a flooded yard or flooded house, whatever, because these people did shoddy work. That's not fair. It's just not. And we need to take action. We got to put our big boy pants on and take action. And I mean action, start finding the guarded school, hiring a contractor to fix it, whatever we got to do, which is appropriate. But we need to take action today so that if this happens, this is done in a week. It doesn't take this long to go out there and dig up a pipe and fix it and do it, especially now the school's not even in session. There's no school. And this is an essential service to keep people's houses from flooding. I, I wish I did every job in Newtown Square. Uh, Joe, can we uh, put the Goddard School on notice? And is there action that we can take against them if this doesn't get resolved? Yeah, I can send them a letter if uh, Eileen, if Eileen gives me the info, I can send them a letter and and put them on notice that we're going to take action and see where we get. 
Could, could we please do that and, and, you know, copy the board on that correspondence just so we all have it and give them a deadline as to when we want an answer as to how this is going to be resolved? Yep. In addition to that, let's also make sure that the, uh, the property owners looped in as well. Um, the property owner being the Flynn's. No problem. Yeah, I, I think a copy of the letter to the Flynn's also would be uh, appropriate. And, um, you know, if we have to, we'll, we'll do things that we have to to the Goddard School. I don't know, you know, what, what the legal process would be, but certainly if they presented a land development plan to us and it was not constructed for the plan or their plan, quote, forgot something, well, that's still on them to fix it. It doesn't matter how long it was. And if they presented a defective plan to us, then I'm sure there's legal remedies that we can take to that, uh, even going as far as uh, yanking their certificate documents and telling them, well, they can't have their programs there anymore until they resolve this. So whatever yeah. we need to do, let, let, let's do that in a letter and let's get in two weeks, let's get a report back from all concerned of, of what the action is. I mean, ideally tell them they need to tell us what they're, how they're gonna resolve this with a deadline. Yeah, I think we need to, John, hold them accountable. I mean, at this point, it, there's no reason these contractors are not busy. And this is essential. A flooding situation is essential, in my opinion. It, it doesn't sound like it's an expensive or detailed fix. So let's get out there and get it done and get it over with. Yeah, I, I agree. Eileen, get me what you have. I will. I'll work Jeff. on it tomorrow. I will. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Good, Leonard. Yeah, thank you. I, I have, I have another. I'm good for thing. now. <laughs> I have another thing for Eileen. And uh, Sorry, Mike. Eileen, did we get the survey of the berm for the back of Toll Brothers at the parking lot? Yes, I forwarded it to Stephen this afternoon. Okay. Well, um, if if or did you did you look at it? Does did they do what they said they were going to do? Because whatever they said they were going to do, and they did. It's not working. We're still getting water over the top of that berm. So that berm has to be raised. And again, I, I, I'm telling you, and Leonard, Leonard, you can speak to this too, because he's got one of my neighbors angrily calling him about the flooding on Goshen Road. So it's not just me getting hit from my neighbors. It's now him getting hit. And again, this situation is the same situation they, they created because they took it out and they raised the grade. That grade, if you look over there next to the path, next to the, to the tavern, they raised that whole area. And the area that was there before was highly dense trees and a lot of scrub brush that didn't allow water to flow onto the property. Even if, even if it was higher, it did not allow water to flow onto the property, which is the, which is the parking lot, which is utilized. Everybody's using that path on a daily basis. It's packed with people. Obviously today in the rain, it probably wasn't packed, but in, on a typical day, it's getting a lot of use because it's one of the few things people can do in town to go and get outside activity. And this needs to be addressed. And I'm tired of Toll Brothers telling us they're addressing things. If they can't open those drainage structures, well, then they can build the berm bigger and they can carry the water out in a truck. I don't care what they do. They can make a temporary pond, whatever they got to do. It's going to be inconvenience on their end of the project, not on the neighbors and, and, and the residents of the community. It's unacceptable. It's been going on now for a year and a half, and it's going to stop. Uh, Eileen, I, I think the issue is not so much as to who did what or what the plan show or anything like that. I, I think we're at the point where the board doesn't care anymore. Uh, Toll Brothers needs to do something to rectify the situation regardless of who's responsible and what cost it is. And, and, and I think that's where we're going and I think that needs to be conveyed to them, okay? Uh, we've got very few projects being undertaken right now in Newtown Township uh, other than Toll Brothers. So, you know, maybe we're concerned about the safety of our code enforcement officials. So maybe we're not gonna send them out to uh, review houses anymore. We need a definitive plan on how they are going to fix this. I don't want to hear it's not their problem or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, we, we want them to fix the problem. Uh, even so far as if it's a, just a neighborly thing for them to do, they need to fix the problem. We're, we're tired of seeing the water, tired of hearing about it, tired of being washed over. They need to fix the problem. Well, any anybody on the board can go out there and look, just stick your head over the, over the silt fence and look, there's a gully coming down next to that double door fiberglass box. And the grade is obviously not <laughs> high the storm that we get. We get these big storms now. It was heavy for a few hours today and then it lightens up. The heavy rain <laughs> be held back when you have no drainage on and you have a burn that's like six inches high. It, 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 again, whatever the issue is, we expect told to fix it. 
and, yeah. and make it go away, all right? And if they, prefer, if they would like to argue that point, then they need to be asked to put on the agenda and they can tell us why they don't want to do it. I, I, we don't, I don't frankly care anymore. They need to fix the problem. Okay. Uh, if they'd rather not fix the problem, then we can go down the legal route with this if we have to. All right. Uh, but that's not going to help them get houses built and houses sold and people moved in. So why, why don't, you know, let's stop playing around. Please get from them a plan of how they're going to fix this. So, you know, subject to your approval uh, and tell, you know, be prepared to tell us in two weeks how they're going to fix this or even have it, maybe, maybe even have it done in two weeks. Yeah. I think you need to put a time, uh, time frame on it that plan or fix it in two weeks. And clearly it is, it's not an issue that happened prior to these houses being built. So they can't say it's not their issue. Yeah. I, ideally, we'd like to have it fixed in two weeks. If not, yeah. we want a plan of how they're gonna fix it in two weeks with, with the, you know, with the definitive timeline associated with that plan. We don't, do we really care about the plan or we just care that it's fixed? We don't care about a plan. We just care it's fixed. Yeah. I thank you, Eileen. You know what we want, right? I do. Then make it happen. <laughs> oh. and thank you. Back, tell them to call us and we'll, we'll get them on the agenda and we'll tell them directly. In two weeks. <laughs> In two, oh yeah, they'll be on the next agenda. <laughs> I, I don't know, does, does um, do we need Richard Joe to send a letter to their attorney? Uh, we, you know. Well, we have another thing for Rich when it comes up later for them. They have another present that they're not done with. Okay. So he might he might be sending them a letter actually. All right. <laughs> Anything else for Eileen? Hearing nothing, uh, we will uh, move on to the manager's report, Mr. Nice. Yes, I have a couple quick things. One is uh, probably at this point, almost three months ago, I believe, um, Ms. Benelli came in and asked for a review. Uh, we did pull projects related to her project. Uh, there were about seven that Eileen has done um, work on that were less than 500, no, less. Yeah, less than 500 square feet. Uh, Ms. Finelli has sent a proposal to me to uh, ask that, that you consider uh, or that we consider uh, reducing or not requiring her to do stormwater so that she could do a, an additional impervious in front of her garage or you know, impervious in front of her garage that currently is pervious. Uh, she gave me the rough size of it. The question that I wanted from you, that just for direction, my intent was to send her back to you for that because I believe that requires your approval because it's actually against an ordinance. So I don't think that we can do that as staff. Uh, I think that that's something that you're gonna need to hear, but I just wanted any input from you to make sure that as I send it back, you understand why it's coming back to you. Is this, is this the person that renovated the house? And, yeah, this um, is the person that didn't put the fire sprinkler in and all that stuff. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Now, I mean, this is ridiculous because the problem is it's an ordinance and we have to meet the guidelines and that's why the ordinance was put in place. And if we waive it for her, we have to wait for everybody that has the same issue. Okay. We're also following in addition to the ordinance, we're also following what the, what the law says too, when it comes to stormwater. I mean, you're right. right just a, a codification of that on a local level. Uh, but Mike's exactly right. I mean, and it's coincidental that it's being discussed after the three complaints that we just had to Eileen speaking about stormwater runoff and everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just, it's not. Mr. Neese, it sounds to me like the position of the board is that we're not gonna waive this anyway. I, I have clear direction. I know where I go. Okay. Yeah. So, so the second thing on my report that's not in front of you, but is uh, we've been uh, hearing some comments about some noise, uh, I guess being told that it sounds kind of like a helicopter or something like that. It's related to SAP and their um, generator. I'm gonna allow Mr. Partridge to give us a little further detail. Uh, he's, spoke, he's got some information about it. Uh, and then we'll talk about the direction. 
Yeah, thanks, Steve. Okay, first thing I want to uh, you know say disclose that I'm an employee of SAP America. Um, I actually heard the, uh, the the generator noise myself on an evening walk. I mean, I actually walk right by the generator itself. Um, and then I got some uh, um, concerns from neighbors uh, late last week, actually Friday. Um, and I'm also aware that another, at least one other board member, Leonard Altieri, also got some um, uh, some concerns from from neighbors. And, about I, their and noise. I actually heard it as well. You can hear okay. it day from my house. Yep. 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 You can yep. hear it. Yep. So. So what I did was I contacted the uh, global head of facilities. I reached out to, to him uh, over the weekend, actually connected with him on Sunday and had some um, you know, conversation about the, the, the issue. So basically what, what's going on here is the, our data set, SAP's data center, you know, requires that there's no um, you know, power interruptions uh, because of the equipment. Um, and the, the equipment, uh, the generator is, you know, extremely sensitive and any kind of changes in the, in the power supply, even, even things short of outages that, um, that, that we as uh, residents wouldn't even know about, um, you know, can, can impact the equipment and, and the generator runtime. So um, SAP's uh, response from the global head of uh, facilities is um, the, the company's aware of the issue and the impact on the neighbors, especially the impact on the neighbors, which is significant. Um, SAP is in process of engaging experts such as uh, acoustic engineers uh, to evaluate the issue and provide resolutions that would mitigate the issue. And SAP is committed to providing a complete resolution to the issue. Um, also, the global head of facilities uh, would um, uh, contact Steve Neese and stay in contact with Steve Neese to provide updates as the process moves along. So I think we have an, you know, we have an acknowledgement, um, you know, they've already moved forward to engage, uh, uh, you know, experts. This is not a, a simple issue. Um, there's actually a wall in front of the generators already. So it's going to require some uh, some more significant, um, uh, um, you know, improvement to, to really, uh, you know, yeah. stop the, uh, stop the noise. So, so that's, um, you know, it's, it's in process and, and Steve will, Steve will get the regular updates. Steve knows the global head of facilities and mm -hmm. Steve's and, uh, been in contact with him in the past. So, uh, hey, when, when did they send that email to you? I got the email, uh, Friday. So the tenth, right? But yeah, but actually, um, Len, more than the emails, uh, you know, I actually, like I said, on an evening walk, I've been taking evening walks every, you know, and actually we, we go about four or five miles down the SAP and back. Yeah. Um, so I actually walked by it, you know, within within 15 feet of the generator while it was running. So, uh, you know, you, you, um, you could be at 69th Street and hear that generator going. And I don't yep. think I mean, I think that the neighbors would be more understanding if it was, you know, there was a some sort of power outage and the generator was running for an hour, two hours, maybe even half a day. But this last time, it was going, I think, from like Wednesday to Friday or Tuesday to Thursday. And yeah, yes, the, the thing that I want to make sure um, is, and it's going to be more for Steve. I mean, it's great that they're saying that, you know, they're contracting with all these experts and 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 all this stuff, but just like we're putting time constraints on other people. I mean, it, I am not going to allow our residents to sit through that nuisance for 36 hours again. I mean, it is absolutely absurd. Um, uh, so I would, I would think that, you know, Steve, you know, if you, if you don't hear from him in a week or from any of those people in a week to just keep following up, because I, I would like to have a, a and, and if they want to come into the meeting virtually next ne in two weeks and talk to us, have them come in because it was abs it's it's absurd. I mean, you look at the high school. We have a backup generator that's a Red Cross center at the high school. It is a backup generator. It does a test once a week on Tuesday at like nine o'clock in the morning for half hour, and that's it. Um, and but even, when that thing, even when that thing runs, yeah. you know, God forbid it ever needs to be used as a Red Cross shelter, it's you can't hear it half a town away. 
Len, there's no minimizing this issue, and this issue has been there before in the past. It, yeah, you know, I appreciate. So, so not. this is this is a this is not a new issue, and this is not this is not just uh, digging up a pipe or something like that. Th this is going to require um, a significant effort from experts, um, and and a significant cost. And you know what I got back from this guy who reports to the to the SAP board is that it's acknowledged. Um, they just started to engage because this issue just came up this week uh, where it was, um, you know, like you said, for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, uh, they're committed to, to a resolution or committed to spending whatever it takes to resolve the issue. And it will be significant. And they know Steve and they're going to give Steve regular updates. Whoa. It's not going to be solved at, the, at our next meeting. Um, but Steve will be informed and be able to provide, uh, you know, um, an update as, as to where they're at. But to that point, Ed, right, is that it's great for them to say all that. I want to make sure that we are staying on top of it, which is why I asked Steve if he doesn't hear anything in a week to do that. But more importantly, even if they give us the commitments that they're going to be looking at the issue, it doesn't mean that it's not going to run again for 36 continual hours. And again, I'm appreciative of everything that you're doing. I want to make sure that we are staying on top of SAP for right. that for this well, reason. Well, okay. normally, Lynn, I stay away from SAP issues, but because right. I experienced it firsthand and walked yeah. by the issue, and because I was contacted, that's why I got involved. Um, but I can assure you that Steve, Steve, uh, you know, that SAP is, to my knowledge, and Steve can speak for himself, has been very responsive to to any, uh, you know, any communication with uh, with Steve. So we we will get updates. It will get resolved, and um, but you know, to be realistic, it's not going to get resolved within a few weeks. Now he's looking. Also, he did mention at any kind of possible mitigation, so that if it does happen, you know, uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, um, that you know, if the generator does uh, start up, that 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 is potentially could be um, could be shut down without impact in the uh, the data center. So, um, you know, it's not something that's being taken lightly. Let's um, let, let's do this, and, and I don't want to put Supervisor Partridge in a bad position here, since it is his employer. Um, uh, Mr. Anise, if you could, by our next meeting, have a written plan from SAP, is some type of written plan with timelines on how they're going to address this, uh, something that you could present to the board uh, to to you know show us what they're doing and what the timeline that they're doing it is. This is. Uh, I, again, I want to try to go through you, but not Mr. Partridge. I don't want Mr. Partridge to, uh, you know, get in trouble here with his employer and <laughs> recognizing that. Uh, but also by the same token, I mean, I, I heard it for 15 years from my backyard and it continues. And yes, yeah, sometimes it's three and four hours at a time. This most recent activity was about 36 hours. Uh, it, you can't even go out in the yard when it's on. Uh, my wife asked me, where's the helicopter? I said, it's not a helicopter, it's the generator. So. Uh, I, I think we've, we've, we've suffered, and I'm glad that SAP recognizes that's an issue. We're not asking them to fix it in the next two weeks. All we're asking for is a formalized plan on what they're going to do moving forward with some timelines. Now, let me, ask, let me ask this question, too. In the event, let's say, and I'm not saying this is what SAP is doing, but in the event that they're giving us fluff, oh, we have experts looking at this, and we're doing that, we're doing this. In the event that it continues to go again, in my mind, and I don't know if we have this in our ordinances, but mm -hmm. isn't there, wouldn't that, wouldn't that trigger, uh, uh, I don't know if we have sound. Uh, we do. Noise, or, noise, no. noise, noise ordinance. Totally, yeah. totally blank on that phrase. And we could certainly send out our people and enforce the noise ordinance against SAP if it, if it comes to that. Yep. Well, hopefully, hopefully they get, it sounds like they got the ball rolling. Hopefully they just yeah. continue at an expeditious pace. I mean, and, and I don't I'm think sure they have other facilities with the same problem because obviously this generator is huge. And, and, and I get it. And I just to touch on what Ed says, I understand that with these types of things, any even fluctuation in the power could cause the generator to go off. And this may be an issue that SAP has to address with PICO to get a more stable power supply to the property yeah. uh, that would cause the frequency of this thing going off but again, and I don't think it's too much to ask for a company even as large as SAP to at least give us a 
timeline to craft up a document in the next two weeks that has a plan with a timeline on it that says, here's what we're doing and here's when we're going to do it. I think that's what we're looking for at this point. I, I hear that loud and clear. I will actually go ahead and draft a letter to SAP from the township related to this. I will get it out within the next two days so that they have it and so that they can be working on that and get it to back to you. Yeah. And Steve, you know who that goes to. I do. If you, if you need information, I can get it to you. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. No, Thank sounds you, everyone. Yep. Good. Uh, the other two things on my list, uh, one we'll talk about more fully as we get a little further down in the in the agenda, uh, but the fire department um, has been kind of put on hold on their construction project um, in that uh, they can't get an inspection they need for their elevator, and so that's impacting them adversely uh, in being able to move in, uh, which has postponed some of that. So. Uh, but the other thing that I would just, I, I would like to give note on, and it's going to kind of bleed into my next update. Um, our fire department has been incredibly aggressive uh, in getting good training uh, to be prepared uh, to go and protect our community in the middle of this uh, pandemic that we've been experiencing. Um, and they, they have... Uh, they regularly have training, uh, but they actually did a special training, a part of their training uh, specifically for how to handle uh, being prepared to go into a home that potentially has the COVID-19 virus uh, in either fighting and or, you know, being a rescue uh, in that way. And so uh, I really appreciate they've done that to protect themselves to protect our community. And so I just wanted to give uh, kudos out to them uh, as a volunteer company to be so uh, forward thinking to make sure that they did that. Um, and they've done it, they've limited the gathering at their station. Uh, you know, that's a, one of the things that volunteers like to do is go hang out at the volunteer fire company. And that's usually how they build camaraderie and how they build up people to wanna come and be a part of that. Um, and so, but they put all that on hold so that they can make sure that they protect those that serve us. And so I just wanted to say thank you to them and let you know what they're doing to protect you. Um, leading right into that, the township likewise has taken uh, significant steps with the staff to make sure they're protected. We are following uh, wearing masks. We are following uh, all of those type of suggestions that have come down from the CDC and uh, from our governor. And we're doing that uh, again to make sure that we stay safe, uh, that we continue, we have a continuity plan in place so that if one person does get sick, uh, we protected parts of the staff so that not everybody's getting sick. And so uh, I just want everybody to know that we're doing that and that, you know, that's where we are. I would ask that people think about a couple things. One is when you're out, uh, I, I really hope that our public would make sure that when they're walking their dogs, they keep dogs on leash. Um, we've had multiple problems with dogs actually attacking each other, which then means that the owners have to get involved to pull the dogs apart. Uh, last I checked, you can't stay six feet apart and do that. Um, and so it really is, yeah, unless they're big dogs. And uh, <laughs> so uh, it is important to make sure that you keep your dogs on leash at this time. Uh, they don't understand. <laughs> they just are being dogs. Uh, but we are people and we need to understand and do that. Um, some people have ignored some of the fencing that we put up. I would ask that they understand it's not there to hold you back. It really is to protect you. Um, and for those of you that have been absolutely committed and as a township done very well at making sure that we've been following the guidelines of staying in homes and those kind of things. I really do appreciate it. The trails are open. I encourage you to use them to get out and do exercise because that's important, uh, but keep your distance, uh, you know, and uh, it is even recommended when on the trails that you have a mask. Remember that when you're wearing a cloth mask, you're protecting everybody else. Um, it's not so much protecting you. So uh, 
you know, when you think about it, make sure you're doing that because you're protecting your fellow citizen. And so I would encourage that. The other thing is that the township will actually, we're gonna staff is gonna spend a fair amount of time uh, over the next couple of weeks, really talking about how we open back up, uh, how we're prepared to serve the community when we do. And uh, we, are, we are doing that. Uh, one of the things that came up a little bit earlier uh, that was brought up in the uh, park and rec group and even the EAC group has been looking at trying to do some programs, which I'm excited about. Uh, one of the challenges is sometimes their programs would be on top of meetings that we're trying to have. And so um, if it's okay with the board, I would like to go ahead and get a second uh, ability, a second level to host and to host webinar, um, which is the most secure way uh, to use Zoom. Uh, I believe it's, uh, Rich, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's, it's I think about $100 a month is what we're spending for this product and uh, between the license and the, and, the, and the piece. And I think we need to have two licenses and two hosts. Um, correct, is, yes. that, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, correct. So if, as long as the board's okay, I know we've been trying to watch our expenses related to this, but I think it's a way to keep our community involved. And we've got groups that are wanting to do some really great things to try to keep our community involved during that time. And it can continue after, uh, and we can continue forward as we talked about getting um, more social media exposure. And I think that this way, if someone can't attend a meeting, they can at least dial in or, or zoom in and, and participate uh, when once we are all uh, free from quarantine, I think it can continue. So in my opinion, I think it's well worth it. it, it and in certain aspects, this has uh, forced people to look at life a little bit differently. And I sure think has. We, can, we can move this thing. If you know if someone can't attend something, at least they can be they can participate in that in that in that way. Even if even if it's you know a parent who can't get a babysitter but wants to be involved in parks and recs, and like on Tuesdays they can't get a sitter, but at least they can dial into a meeting. Sure. Yeah. So I, I I for one think we should do it. I'm good with it. I'm good. Good. I'm good. Well, then I'll, I'll move forward with us doing that. And uh, I do think it's a benefit for our community. And uh, I, you know, I, so I will do that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that pretty much wraps up my report, unless the board has any questions. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Neese? Seeing none, we will move on. Item 12.1 consider approving the $965 escrow release payment to Renee Marcosi at 114 Northwood Road for a canceled grading project. Would anybody like to offer a motion on that item? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Supervisor Robert Slightcap, seconded by Supervisor Partridge to approve item 12.1. Any further <laughs> questions or discussions on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 13, uh, consider approving the bills, or I'd like to say that I had the chance before the meeting to review the checks uh, that uh, Township dropped them off uh, on the check register dated April 13th, 2020, in the amount of $202,682.12. And it is my motion that we approve those bills. Is there a second? Second. Motion was seconded by Supervisor Partridge. Any further questions or discussions from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, moving on, under new business, our first item is to consider approving the Township Engineer's Award recommendation of Glasgow Inc. as the lowest responsible bidder for the 2020 road program, accepting the base bid and alternate bids 1A through 5A for a total of $4,159,187 and 97 cents. So moved. Second. Which was made by Supervisor Altieri, seconded by Supervisor Partridge. Uh, does the board have any questions for our engineer or our manager on this item? Um, I just have a, I'm sorry, go ahead, Leonard. I got Gina, good. I just have a quick question. What was, um, just for, for curiosity, tw the last road program, how much was that? And how much does this, how many miles of road does this, um, um, include or cover. 
I've asked okay. questions that are probably don't. I'm looking at Steve's face. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if I recall, the last road program was roughly 1.6 million. So it gives uh -huh. you an idea of how much bigger this one is. Um, as for the total miles of roadway, I see Eileen took her uh, mute off. I'm hoping she has an answer. <laughs> Um, I definitely can confirm the 1.6. Um, if you give me a few minutes, I can get the total. Um, it's somewhat at my fingertips, but not um, right Is off the bat. Is it four back. times the size, Eileen? Is it about four times the size of the last um, time we did this? I, I think it's even more. Um, the numbers that we got were uh, significantly lower. Okay. Um, just Troop Farm Road, Stony Brook, and Campus are two miles. Wow. And then we're doing um, Echo Valley, Florida Park. Oh, oh wow. Brook. So um, I'll get you the number before we're all done, but um, yeah, there's- No, it there's sounds significant. If you can yeah. get it, fine, but no, I didn't realize it, it covered Echo okay. Valley as well, so. Um, if you look at the attachment, on the agenda, it shows the drawing that has all the roadway locations um, identified. If you look, it's the uh, highlighted dark areas. Uh -huh. uh, we're, we're doing our portion of Whitehorse. We're doing all of uh, Hunt Valley, Hunt Valley Circle, all of Echo Valley. Uh, all, when, we say, uh, when we say Echo Valley, we mean the whole development, not just Echo Valley Lane. Yeah, yes, I'm, when I, I'm sorry, I do mean the entire development, thank you. Um, I, it involves across, across the street, all of uh, Springhouse and Carriage. It involves Woolman, it comes all the way up, it does Boot Road, uh, it does uh, Phillips. Phillips. It then jumps up and picks up all of the Florida Park subdivision. Wow. Well. Um, it does, as we talked about, down campus, uh, down Stony Brook, down Troop Farm, and it also does Gradyville from 252 all the way down to uh, Bishop Hollow Road. So essentially, um, right, it's basically any road that was impacted with the sewer project in addition to other ones. And, yeah. oh, and, I, and I missed here, it also includes Ellis um, yes. on the south side of, of Bishop Hollow Road. So to give you an idea, that's quite a bit of roadway. Oh, yeah. um, the, the, thing, the two things that I want to make the board aware, this recommendation is from the engineer and from your staff. Uh, there were two alternates that we did not include uh, in this. One alternate was to do the extension of Florida Avenue out to Bishop, or out to um, campus. campus Boulevard. It came in um, about four times the cost of the other part of the project uh, for the particular bidder that we did that. We felt that was too high. Um, and so, and we had not finalized everything there regarding easements and things like that. So we have to get that done. Uh, we may go back and make a recommendation to do that in the future, uh, even on this project, but just know that. The other piece that was a part of the bid that came back, but it came back very expensive was on Bishop Hollow, or not Bishop Hollow, but Campus Boulevard, Stony Brook, and Troop Farm, we're putting in bike lanes. And as part of that, we actually looked at doing a different porous paving, uh, or porous, uh, is it paving, conglomerate, whatever it is, yeah, that, I, yeah. that would have been there. It's not, it wasn't just colored asphalt, it was actually porous that would have served as a storm water. Uh, the price came in at 1.6 million, which was like really significant. And so we did not recommend that to you. We felt like there were other places we could spend 1.6 million and get better stormwater impact. Um, and so, uh, but that it still will be a bike lane uh, uh, painted on the roadway there. And so we wanted, I just wanted you to know that, but those two pieces, the project were not included uh, as the alternates that were recommended. And obviously the biggest question everybody wants to know is when will we start going in? Well, that's a good question. It'll take probably usually takes 30 plus days to get the contracts all taken care of and all of the stuff done. Um, PennDOT is giving some open projects for companies that can go forward. 
um, and they have a guidelines that they're using for people to um, move forward with the COVID on how to protect themselves and how they're protecting their employees and how they would protect our inspectors. Uh, so we would ask, and uh, what I would recommend is that would be the one addendum to the project, that, to the contract that we would recommend would be that they have to come up with a COVID-19 plan that they would use to do the project, but that based on what PennDOT's opening back up, I think that we could justify very clearly that this should be opened up um, and for the public safety of our community, because if we don't get it done this year and we have a bad snow next year, it would be bad. So I think we need to get it done. Any other questions for Mr. Nisa or Eileen on this item? Seeing none, did we get a motion and a second? You do have a motion and a second, Mr. Yep. Chairman. I would ask that the that you add to ask to add to the contract a COVID nineteen plan that would meet PennDOT standards. Uh, are we okay with that, Board? Yes. Okay. So the motion is to uh, accept the Township Engineer's award recommendation of Glasgow Inc. as the lowest responsible bidder for the 2020 road program, accepting the base bid and alternate bids 1A through 5A with a total bid in the amount of $4,159,187.97, subject to submission of a COVID-19 action plan uh, acceptable to PennDOT. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please simplify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Fantastic. Um, next item is item 14.2, which is consider approving the Township Engineer's award recommendation of JMC contractors as the lowest responsible bidder for the 2020 inlet program with a total bid of $271,295. So uh, who's the second? Second. This was made by Supervisor Russo, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap to approve item 14.2. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Neese or Ms. Nelson on this particular item? I would also ask the same addendum put on this motion that we put on the last one that they have a COVID-19 plan that's, that's uh, based off the of PennDOT recommendation. So the motion would be to approve the Township Engineer's award recommendation of JMC contractors as the lowest responsible bidder for the 2020 inlet program in the amount of $271,296 subject to the submission of a COVID-19 plan approved by PennDOT. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 14.3, consider rejecting Aqua Pennsylvania's offer of $41,750 in lieu of pavement requirements for the waterline work performed on Barron Road, they will be required to pave the portion of the road impacted by the project. Mr. Nees, can you shed some light on this item? Yes, um, typically we would want to accept the offer. It's actually not a bad offer for the work that's there. However, um, Barron is not on our road program for the next couple of years. And so in order, we just think it's in the best interest of the community there that Aqua come and fix the road. Um, and if we did need to get back in, we would just do a half repaving ourselves. So instead of accepting your money, we're gonna make them fix it? Correct. Would anybody like to offer a motion on item 14.3? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Altieri to uh, reject Aqua PA's offer on Barron Road. Any further questions from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 14.4, this is consider approving a request to advertise for bids associated with the Chesterbrook culvert replacement. And uh, Eileen has provided us with the culvert report and the amount in there. Uh, it's Clearbrook. Sorry, Clearbrook. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Russo, to approve the request to advertise for bids for the Clearbrook culvert replacement. Uh, any questions uh, of Mr. Nisa or Ms. Nelson from the board? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Item 14.5, <laughs> approving the invoice from Mr. <laughs> J. Gallagher for the payment of the 2020 pension plan fiduciary liability insurance. The payment will be paid out of the respective pension plans as follows. $2,521 from the police pension plan and $630 from the non-uniform pension plan. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Which was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap to approve item 14.5. Any the board member need any clarification from Mr. Neese or this is pretty self-explanatory. Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 14.6, consider approving the fire company resolution 2020-02, which is the agreement of sale for the purchase of the fire company property located at Sawmill Road and Route 252 at a sum of $350,000. John, I'll move that um, and add up to 50% down payment. So a motion has been made by Supervisor Partridge to approve resolution 2020 for the purchase of the property at 335 North Newtown Street Road uh, and that we make a payment, a down payment of half of the $350,000. Is there a second? Second. Motion was seconded Mr. Chairman, by you should you should note that at the last meeting there was a question on what the appraisal was and because we didn't have an agreement of sale yet, we didn't disclose it. So the appraisal was for the 350,000. Okay. Uh, uh, this motion was seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap. Um, I appreciate the clarification, Mr. Catania. Are there any other questions regarding this motion, approval of this resolution? I know this is all something we really wanna get done. So seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, resolution 2020 dash, uh, resolution two of 2020 is hereby approved. We have, we now own the property at Selma Road and Route 252 and Mr. Neese will make the payment to the fire company post haste. Thank you folks. This has been a long time coming and I think uh, it, well done, so. Yep. All right, moving on. Item 14.7 is consider approving the advertising of the ordinance to refinance the 2016 general obligation bonds for Delaware Valley Regional Finance Authority at a fixed rate, which will lock at the time of passing the ordinance. Currently, the rate is 1.12%. Wow. The closing would not be until December 2021 when the bonds become callable. Mr. Neese, a little uh, uh, explanation, please. So uh, if, if you recall back in 2016, we took out, uh, roughly $9.5 million worth of bonds um, on this building to do the renovations. Um, and uh, as we were listening to what was going on in the market, uh, the interest rates have dropped significantly. Um, we were able to work with the Delaware Valley Regional Financing Authority, and they shared back this 1.12. Uh, at the 1.12, and Rich uh, Lafayette can correct me if I'm wrong, we were gonna save over a million dollars uh, on the remaining part of the bond. Is that correct, Rich? Uh, yes, approximately. Approximately. And so there, there is two caveats that, just so I want you to be aware. Um, one is that, um, in doing this, we, we can't take the money until the bonds are callable. Uh, however, we do become responsible for the interest on the bonds during that time, or, or on the money that we're borrowing to pay for the bonds at that time. So we will have one year, um, well, about a year and a half, where we're paying for interest on both the money that we are going to pay back and the money that we're borrowing to pay the money back. We're still saving uh, that kind of money in doing so uh, in full disclosure, just so that everybody knows this is a swap deal. Uh, that's what the DelVal uses. 
uh, just so that you understand there are two risks that you have. One is, is that the interest rate would go down lower and you wanted to pay the bonds back early. Um, if that happens, uh, my comment would be, you would still have to, the difference would be, you'd still have to pay what the interest rate is now. That's the risk that you're exposed to. Um, so it's a, you're, you're kind of agreeing to that rate. The other exposure would be if DelVal for some reason was unable uh, to continue to guarantee the financing, uh, they could be considered callable and there would be a risk that, that in that place. Uh, DelVal's been in business a very long time. That's never been an issue. Uh, I normally would not suggest that, but based on the how low the interest rate is, how long they've been in business, I think it's a safe bet for the township uh, to take to save an, a, a significant amount of money over the next, uh, I believe it's 15 years that we still have to pay on the bonds. What's our rate now, Steve? It's, it averages between three and 4%. Is that correct, Rich? Yep, correct. That answers the question, I think. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, this, is a, this is an amazingly attractive rate, Mr. Neese. I, I don't know how we couldn't uh, take up this opportunity to save some big dollars. Um, uh, any board members have any questions for Mr. Neese on this item? No. If not, uh, would I, I'll consider a motion. So moved, John. A uh, motion was made by Supervisor Partridge to approve item 14.7. Is there a second? Second. This was seconded by Supervisor Russo. Um, any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving item 14.7, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 14.8, wow, it's an even lower <laughs> interest rate. This is consider approving the advertising of an ordinance to finance the 2020 road program through Delaware Valley Regional Finance Authority at a fixed rate, which will lock at the time of passing of the ordinance. Currently the rate is 0.886%. So moved. Is there a second? Second. This was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Roberts Lightcap. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Neese on this item? If I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, just sure. to, to full disclosure, uh, you had set money aside for this purpose. Yes. And that money is still there and we will potentially be using some of that money that's set aside to probably pay interest for the first year or so on this until we get the other bonds cleared so that we can start using the money from the savings on the other bonds to help cover this payment. But um, in, in, at the lowest point of what this rate is, less than 1%, uh, I felt that it was better to give you the cash options, uh, particularly in light of the potential stormwater projects that we wanna try to address it would give us more. It would give us more cash to be able to do that, and so this frees up some cash that way, so that we can be able to do that going forward. It's outstanding rate. So <laughs> again, you can't pass up a rate like that. So well done. Any further questions for Mr. Neese on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 14.9, consider approving remaining a participating municipality in Delaware County, Urban County designation for the purposes of the uh, Community Development Block Grant eligibility for 2021 to 2023. Mr. Neese, nice, a little explanation. Yes, so um, the county does a block grant for urban and community uh, purposes as a qualification and so what they like to do is have as many municipalities uh, participate as possible. Um, the, the piece would be is that if we had a project that we were looking at, um, potentially they would give us funding from what they went out to go and get. Um, the, dis, the advantage would be for the county if we didn't ask for a project uh, or do something, they would be using our um, population and our size to help get more money to be able to do more projects within the county. So I see it as a big benefit for the county. We don't really have any projects that I see us doing uh, that we would be using uh, community development block grant right in the moment. 
uh, and for the next three years, I think we're pretty safe uh, in doing that. Um, and I think it's a benefit to the county. We've always been a participating member up, uh, uh, in the past with them. Uh, and so it would require us making a decision not to be. And so um, I'm just asking you to consider remaining in. Is there any disadvantages to the township to remaining in the program? Yeah, there is in that we, we lose the right to go to CBD, CDBG for purpose of getting our own grant um, because we're put in with the county. Um, to be honest with you, we're gonna, other than maybe in the St. Albans area, we would be pretty hard pressed uh, to do a whole lot with what they have. It's really designed for housing and for, for urban housing. And uh, we, we tend to be more suburban housing. Um, in, in the approach. So, but it's not that we couldn't get something in the future. I just don't think we're gonna be ready within the next three years. And so I think it's best to allow the county to get the benefit and it helps the county overall. And if we do have something, we go to the county and ask them to consider our project. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Neese? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approving our remaining in the uh, County uh, CDBG uh, funding program. Anybody? Steve, Steve, it's your recommendation to stay in it? Uh, yes, because if we had something that, that we had a project right now we wanted to do or something I saw on the horizon, I would give you something different. I think it benefits the county. If we pull out and we don't do anything, the county can't count us and we don't give anything. All right, so, so I'm, I'll, I'll make the motion. Well, I think Mr. Partridge already made the motion. Uh, all right, then I'll second it. All right, motion was made by Supervisor Partridge, seconded by Supervisor Altieri to remain a participating municipality in the Delaware County uh, Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, any further questions or discussions from members of the board? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries unanimously. Item 14.10, consider directing Toll Brothers to remove the swamp house and fill in the foundation with clean fill dirt as per the listener HOA request. Discussion. Any discussion? I'll make a motion to get it on the table, John. Motion was made by Supervisor Partridge to uh, direct Toll Brothers to remove the Swamp House. Uh, and I guess he's stated the purposes to simply get it on the table. Is there a second? I'll second it for the discussion. Motion seconded by uh, Mr. Altieri. Okay, well, we have a motion there. What is the board's uh, pleasure with this particular item? Well, I guess I'll start off. Um, the, the one question I guess I have is, I know that um, this swamp house was originally one of the buildings that was supposed to be preserved um, as it was shown on the, on the plans. Um, and I think that Toll has removed three to four um, other buildings that were also supposed to be uh, preserved for their historic uh, origin. So I guess the one question I have, and I, I hope that Anita is still on here because um, uh, I think she would probably be the, the appropriate person to answer this. But has the Newtown Square Historic Society, Historical Society, weighed in on on um, the removal of this? Um, I mean, personally, I don't like the idea of removing of of changing the plans after they've been filed. Um, they've been those buildings were um, selected for preservation for a reason. I get the argument that um, the HOA is making um, that it's an attractive nuisance, but unfortunately, I think it's because Toll Brother has fail to, to maintain them and keep them um, uh, up to what they should be keeping it up to, um, to turn it into that historic element. So just for the discussion purpose, I guess, if we can have a need to answer that, or again, Steve, if that's you or Eileen, whoever, but has the Historical Society um, been consulted uh, with this? I'm uh, having a minute trying to bring Anita up and uh, well, while Mr. Nice is doing that, Mr. Altieri, I guess my 
uh, remembrance is that yes, the historical society has at previous meetings uh, indicated their desire to have this structure remain as part of the historic properties at the uh, old Lissiter property. So, um, I mean, that again, I'm not speaking for the historical society, but I do believe that <coughs> their uh, testimony at prior meetings, I, I want to say a year, year and a half ago, where they had uh, strongly uh, voiced a, a, a desire to have this building retained, and they brought up the very point that you brought up is that the only reason it's in the conditions in is because it wasn't maintained during uh, the, 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 the Toll Brothers project. So uh, I have been able to get Anita uh, up. I believe if she wished to talk, she could talk at this point. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, I, what I would offer is this. John Batista is on our elicitor board. And my understanding is that he's been a member of the Historical Society and he was in favor of this request. If that uh, can help any with understanding where we are coming from. We certainly would not want to destroy a property that had strong historical value. If, uh, you know, from the time I've been there and from other board members being there, it has not been um, determined from anything that's been given to us that uh, there is some historical value other than the fact it's on the property. Uh, Mrs. Bork, let me, uh, uh, let me ask this question, I guess. Um, uh, obviously we understand what your, what your position presently is, um, but as part of a larger project, if the township had other things that needed to happen at that property, uh, is this something that could the, the removal of the structure uh, be put on hold so that we have time to negotiate a more global solution to some of the other issues that are occurring on the uh, Toll Brothers uh, property there on your property right now? All right, I'm not sure which um, other issues you are referring to, but I would just suggest that uh, we're trying to look at this in terms of a more immediate issue from the standpoint of community safety. And it is a big concern to the board, um, whatever, I don't know what the condition of the property was at the time that Toll Brothers took over the property, but it looks like this property has been in a, a dilapidated state for quite some time. Who presently owns the structure? Uh, well, it is part of the property and the association is in transition with toll, which means that um, we are working through any issues we see on the property that toll needs to correct so that the association doesn't end up with the uh, burden of having to take care of something that toll should have taken care of. Right, and that, that, that's my concern too. We, we certainly don't want to burden the homeowner association with something that, that toll should have taken care of. If toll still owns the property, that gives us a little bit more uh, leverage, I think, to direct them to do certain things on the, to the structure until we can come up with a, a more global solution for all the issues that are, are ongoing at the, the uh, entire property there. Well, as we noted in our letter uh, to the board, the uh, association um, has um, voted the transition board in place. And so this board is in the, in the process of working with toll on the transition of all of the property and trying to make sure that what will be coming or what is with the, the um, association now is in the proper condition so it is not a burden on the association going forward. Well, the one thing, um, first of all, thanks for answering that question for me, um, Ms. Uh, Anita. Um, the one thing I would like to see, um, depending on what we do tonight, if this gets tabled or, or whatever happens, is um, I would like to have a letter um, from the Historical Society giving an opinion on this. It's, I understand, based on what you said, that John, um, being a member of your board, um, and that he was in favor of that. Um, but I just want to have the position of the historical society, because um, I don't think, uh, I, yeah, I would think that that's in conflict, but I would like to hear from the historical society um, and not just uh, just uh, John, who's a member of both do, boards. Do we have, um, I think Larry's here, uh, Len, who's also uh, a yeah, member on the board. When I say the historical society, I want them to take action officially and then send us a letter. Can I, can I ask a question? 
can I ask a question? Has the historical society put together um, what constitutes an historical building? What what fits an historical building and what does not? Well, I think I think the problem you have, ma'am. This is Mr. Uh, Michael Russo speaking. There was a list of buildings that was gone through on the on the Dupont property before it was bought by the uh, original buyer. And there were certain buildings were stated to remain, certain buildings were stated to be torn down. And two significant, or two or three significant buildings were torn down by Toll Brothers throughout the course of this project. And some of the other buildings they utilize, I think, I think you use one now for your, um, they renovated it for your meeting room. And then they use one for their office. And this particular building was never maintained, but there was actually people living in this structure prior to Toll Brothers getting on site. So this house is a fully functional house. And, that, and that's the rub here because again, there were significant relief given to Toll Brothers to tear down two very large barns, which would have been very expensive to upkeep and maintain. They were part of the original approval that was granted to this property. So we, I feel that we need to talk to the historical society to see how they feel about this particular house. Even though the house is in very much in disrepair, to be honest with you, we met with your folks back in May of last year. And in, at that point, they were going to get back to us within a month. And here you're coming back to us now 11 months later, and it's an emergency. We want to get it down right away. And I think we need to look into this a little bit just to be from the standpoint uh, from our board that we're not doing something that, you know, that drastic, that quick without taking all the investigative action into this, in my opinion. Uh, Mr. Neese, um, is the property, the, the swamp house, is it currently fenced off? Say that. I'm sorry, I, you is, dropped is off. The, is the property, the, the swamp house, currently fenced off? Um, I've not been down there recently, but I do believe it was fenced off um, a couple months ago. I thought we had discussions about fencing it off because of the claims that it was unsafe. So I think we directed told to fence it off at some point. We did. we did at a board meeting. Yeah, we were, yeah, we directed them in okay. a board meeting to do that. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, what, what's the board's pleasure on this item? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the motion that's on the table will probably not pass. Um, perhaps we should table this and direct uh, Mr. Needs to reach out to the historical society and our commission and get them to send us a letter uh, stating what their exact desires are with this property and then we can take this under advisement at the next meeting uh, or we could go and direct toll to you know stabilize the property or the the uh, house as per their original plan i asked um for mike russo a question was there anything else that was outstanding that the um when you met with um i guess it was the the the, the prior board um uh, prior to there, there's there was two other buildings that were they were discussing again. There's a, a there was a foundation of an old barn that's in the middle of a, right across from some of the units in the middle of the project, and then there's another um, spring house that has a green metal roof on it that was also in question. And those buildings again, I don't know. I have not been back in there in probably a year, or so I can't even tell if they're still standing. But those are all part of these projects that were supposed or properties and the buildings that were supposed to stay. And again, the board at the time when we met with them and with Toll Brothers, they requested that they wanted to remove a lot of these buildings because they felt that the upkeep on these older buildings and they didn't serve any functional value to them. But again, they were supposed to go back and meet as a board last year and now we're hearing about this 11 months later. So again, I don't even know if, if you discussed all these other buildings because you, know, you have to maintain these buildings and these other buildings from what I understand again, one was a foundation only, and the other building, I don't know what condition it was in. The, the foundation only building, I believe, is, is still there. I would need to check on the um, condition of that, but I believe that is still there. And the spring house, I believe I know which one that you're talking about there. It is still there, but I don't know that anything has been done with it. It's completely overgrown, has been overgrown in <clears throat> a swampy area. Right. Well, I, I mean, that's, again, that's, that's, that's what the discussion was. There wasn't a discussion. It was just the concern that the people had at the time from, from your board that we have these old buildings and they're all kind of, we're going to inherit all these. There's going to be a cost associated with maintaining these buildings. And I guess, 
again, I think at this point, I think we just need to do a little investigation end on our own as a board, just to make sure we're not, we're not leaning one way or the other without hearing both sides of the equation, in my opinion. I understand. Is there something that we can do from our, our current board standpoint that would be of help to you? Well, I, I think to meet with us and yeah. do the, it's part of their land development approvals. And so I would encourage them and we will direct, I would imagine direct Steve Neese to reach out to them as well to get this thing resolved before they turn this, uh, turn everything over to you as a board, Anita. Um, I would, I would encourage them uh, strongly to reach out to us because it is their responsibility um, because it's, it's their land development plan. And so they're under contract. They were under contract to keep those properties, those buildings. And we don't want to, you know, unduly burden you uh, as the homeowners association, but, you know, contractually um, Toll Brothers did agree to that uh, when they brought in their land development plans. Uh, I mean, I, I guess the thing I would say, certainly we want to hear from the historical society, if there is some true historical value to these buildings, we're not aware of that and should understand that part of it. I'll just mm -hmm. say to you, I know at this point, there is no use of those buildings at all that, that we have any need for, which means the association will be maintaining buildings at whatever cost that we do not intend to use. We already have one building that Toll is using as their office um, that we're going to have to maintain and we haven't determined what use we're going to have of that. I do know that, uh, and some of you may have been to our carriage barn, which was a huge structure that Toll did spend a considerable amount of money renovating and it is a very good community asset that we really appreciate. So we certainly don't want to destroy something that has true historic meaning to this township, but neither do we want to end up with buildings that we're required to maintain when, when there isn't really um, a use for them. So uh, I'll just say that and say that we're, we're very much wanting to work with you and get this resolved. We, we just sincerely don't want to end up with the association being burdened with costs of buildings that we cannot that we would have to maintain and that, that are not determined to have significant historical value. Well, I guess, I guess yeah. my question, I guess my question then is, so the foundation at one's obvious, that's a foundation, but the, the, the one that you say is overgrown and then you want to say that for their, that they use for their office. So are you going to come back to us and ask us then to tear those buildings down too? Because I guess at some point your whole project was approved by during development process and, and nobody in this group that of supervisors here now approved this project it was all previous to us so there was a several buildings were stated to remain for whatever reason again it was pre, pre, prior to everybody here and two very significant barns which would have probably been very expensive to maintain one at, at the exit there on rockwell farm road there where there's a big field where there's supposed to be a plaque, which I don't think has been installed yet. That was a significant barn. I mean, a huge barn that was torn down. And then there was another bigger barn over by the uh, other entrance, more by their office. And again, those were torn down for whatever reasons at the time. Again, it predates us. But now, you know, I, I have a feeling that you guys are going to come to us now and say, well, we don't have a use for this building. We don't have a use for that building. We don't have a use for this building. The only building we want to stay is the carriage house because obviously the carriage house was renovated. Well, I'm not sure what was explained to you when you bought a house in that project and, and what they explained to you as the board of why these buildings are still up, I guess, you know, I think we need to take it under advisement, look into this with our historical board and see what accommodations we can make. I, I don't think we're going to, I don't think anybody in this board is going to say, yeah, come in and take all these buildings. You don't want, want to be responsible to maintain and just tear them down. I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's why this project was approved. In my opinion. I don't hey, think that's hey. what we're asking either. Uh, the the building that Toll has their offices in now, there's no intention to ask anyone to tear that down. It's a usable building. We will find some kind of use for it, but um, it's unknown exactly what that will be. The foundation obviously is only a foundation, and the other yeah. building, the other building that is back in the trees, is quite small. Looks like it may have been a spring house or something of that sort. And I don't know what the condition of that house is. You can hardly see it because of all the trees around it. 
Anita, can I ask a question? When is the um, when is the full transition um, supposed to take place? When is toll going to be completely out and your HOA in in, in charge? Um, our under of course we have the transition of the board, which happened in September. The, uh, in terms of them completing their homes, it was going to be um, in 2021. However, with the with the um, COVID-19, that may delay that somewhat. Uh, so uh, it originally was in the 2021 timeframe, but now it could be longer than that. All right. <clears throat> Hey, hey, John, uh, this is Ed. In, in light of this discussion, I'd like to retract my previous motion to approve, and I'd like to make a motion to table this item um, per the discussion and the request to get the letter from the historic board. Mr. Altieri, as the second, are you uh, in agreement with, with, with the original motion? Once a motion's made to table, there's no need for a second. So we're discussion, but I will just add this, even though I said there's no need for discussion, I would make it a point um, that I, I guess it would be Steve, well, definitely Steve, and if Mike would be the supervisor or anyone else, um, to, I, I think as Tina said, I think it's a benefit for the township, the homeowners association, and told to sit down. And then in addition to that, get the, uh, the analysis or recommendation from the full historical society board um on what they think as well hey hey len since my motion was two two parts one to retract the motion to approve and to table uh i'm still looking for a second you don't have to you just make a motion to table i understand to table yeah, right. you don't need right. a second right. motion but to, you, you know the, uh, i'll second it also to retract <laughs> I'll second. once the motion is made to table it goes away so if we're tabled we're tabled i think that's the best thing at this point table to table and uh, we'll, Anita, thank you. Right, thank uh, you for your consideration. Could, we look forward to working through this. If I could, on a procedural issue, sure. um, we are getting some questions and answers. I want to make it clear uh, not, we're getting questions in the question and answer tab. We are not addressing those. And right. I just want, to, I want everybody to understand uh, this is not like we're trying to slight you. Uh, if you want to make a public comment, you can make a public comment, but we are, if the board chooses to accept public comment on this, but I want to be clear that we are not addressing the questions and answers throughout the agenda, uh, just as a procedural issue. So everybody understands that. Well, that's why we did that at the beginning. If anyone had any comments on the agenda items up front, uh, we can all see the, the questions that were posed here. We will accept them as comments and we'll move on. Yep. I just, I just wanted to go on record. I appreciate that. Yep. Steve, you will uh, direct the historical uh, commission to uh, give I, something in writing regarding the, this and uh, other structures on the property. I have a, I have a note here to myself that we are requesting a letter from the historic society uh, related to the structures on the property. Please uh, direct toll to make sure they do not tear down this building down and let them know that they are responsible for uh, making sure it continues to stand up and continuing to fence it if they deem it unsafe. Uh, I am looking at our guest under the uh, list here, and I believe that Mr. Theron is in our audience. So, oh, good. I believe, so sure. I, I believe he is hearing that. I will confirm that with him in the morning. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Seeing none, moving on. Item 1411, consider approving payment to the fire company for the remaining three quarters of the township's yearly contribution, totaling $235,000. This will authorize the staff to process and release the payment as soon as possible. I guess what the fire company is requesting of us is not an increase in what we give them, simply that rather than giving it out quarterly, which we normally do is to make the entire annual payment <clears throat> right now. I guess my question to Mr. Neese is, are we in a position to be able to do that? Uh, again, because the board has been wise and set aside some funding uh, of the 25% so that we would be prepared for when times when cash was small, uh, we're in good position to go ahead and do that. We can cover that until the funds come in. Um, I would suspect even if the funds were tight as the year went on, we would not cut back fire funding. I, I can't say that you wouldn't do that, but I, I know that as a whole, the board has been pretty supportive of funding the fire company. And so 
I would assume that. And again, the purpose of this is because they're unable to get their financing, uh, but they still have bills that need to be paid right now because of the COVID-19 issue. And I think it's responsible on our part. And it helps them finish their building and their building looks wonderful. So I, I got to so would any board member like to offer a motion on this item? I make a motion that we uh, pay the fire company the remaining three quarters of the township yearly con contribution of 235,000. Is there a second? Have to process, uh, process and release payment as soon as possible. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made by Supervisor Russo, seconded by Supervisor Roberts. Like cap to approve item 14.11. Any further questions or discussions on members of, from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries unanimously. We have nothing listed under old business. Under uh, item 16, resolutions and legislative action, we have resolution number 2020-16. Mr. Partridge, do you have that in front of you? Yes, I do. Okay. Township of Newtown, Delaware County, PA, resolution number 2020-16, a resolution authorizing an application to the Delaware County Council for an allocation of county liquid fuel tax funds in 2020 for the municipal roadway street improvement program of 2020. Whereas the undersigned municipality desires to take advantage of the act approved by June 1st, 1945, um, 12, 1242, and, I, and as provided in the act approved May 18th, 1945, Public Law 803, permitting counties and of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to appropriate and expand monies for the improvements and maintenance of state highways and state aid highways, a public highway in any county of the Commonwealth. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the officials of Newtown Township, Dover County, Pennsylvania, in regular session, assembled the 13th day of April 2020, hereby make application to the County Council of Delaware County for an allocation of county liquid fuel tax funds in the amount of $17,955 to be used towards the 2020 inlet program. It is certified by the municipality and the officers who execute this application that materials used and work done here under shall conform to the current Pennsylvania Department of Transportation transportation specifications or specifications approved by the department and that all work will be done within the legal right of way or with permission of the abutting property owners adopted this 13th day of april 2020 and that's my motion is there a second second motion was made by supervisor partridge seconded by supervisor roberts lightcat to approve resolution 2020-16 which authorizes the application to Delaware County Council for our allocation of liquid fuel funds for 2020. Any further questions or discussions from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have no additional business listed. Does any board member need to bring any additional business to the board? Well, I just want to... Um... Make sure that Rich Secor follows up with Toll about the um, houses along the trail that have to have the stone put on the basements. It's still not done. Mr. Secor, are you still online? I'm not sure Rich was online. I know Joe was. Well, I mean, you can get with him, Steve, and, and talk to him about that. But when John and I met with Toll out there with Rich and our other attorney last year, it was agreed that they would put the stone along the houses facing the trail from the first one all the way down right. and they kind of went and did two and stopped yeah they needed to finish the project it's still not done i guess and so if you could get rich to uh rattle their cage a little and find out what the status is that would be much appreciated okay and again this is part of the overall approval for the property this right. is not something we're just asking it's the overall requirement of the property they agreed to do it. It's just they haven't finished it yet. I mean, we, you know, we're expecting there doesn't seem to be any reason why they haven't finished it yet, especially since they are approved by the governor to be working. Let's go get that done. Um, any other board? Uh, I, I, and I don't mean to defend toll. Toll's approval to work is limited uh, to homes that are settling between now and the end of May. Uh, well, some of these houses must be settling because there's brand new concrete poured there last week. 
So I assume they're only pouring concrete on houses they're settling in the next month. Well, that would be true. I mean, from what I've seen in my walks around that, that property, it looks like they, they're houses that they're actively working on. So I don't think we're asking them okay. to do anything outside of what they're approved to do. If they're actively working on these houses, we have to assume that they're ready for settlement. So they need to take care of this brick issue too that we that they said they would do. Okay, I'll follow up with it. Please. Uh, does any other board member have any additional business? Any board members have any comments? I'll just offer a couple real quick for the benefit of those on, online. Uh, you know, pretty simply stay home, maintain your social distance, wear a mask when you're outside. And um, if you're inclined and if you have the ability, I would encourage you to consider uh, ordering out once a week from one of our many fine restaurants in Newtown Township. Um, you know, it helps them out a lot. And uh, I think that would uh, go a long way to helping us keep all these fine restaurants in Newtown Township. I don't have any other board members have any comments. Seeing none, we'll move on to the public comment uh, part of the meeting. If any members that are online have any comment on something that's not on the agenda, um, either raise your hand or uh, hit it in the Q&A and uh, we'll give it due consideration. Currently, we have nothing in the email and not, no one's hands raised. Okay, we do have uh, one... Actually, we do have an anonymous attendee here. I'm looking at the chat and it says that it's a pretty good question, I guess. Uh, when will the tree ordinance be put back on the agenda? I don't know, Mr. Nice, where are we with the tree ordinance? Um, I believe that the tree ordinance uh, is gone back to... Uh, J Joe, do you have that under your review now? I, yeah, I'm not, I, uh, George, George sent me... Uh, a bunch of comments that he, I think he thought, I'm not remember what his email said in the beginning, but he thought he had sent it to me earlier, but he might've sent it to me on Wednesday. Um, and if, if those comments result in some changes to it, I have to look and see whether it's significant enough that we have to re-advertise. So Suzanne asked me on Friday or Thursday if we should put it on the uh, agenda and out of caution, I told her not to. We could probably have it on the next one, and I could get a definitive answer on whether we have to re-advertise. No, I, I think I think that'd be a good idea. Either uh, if it's on the agenda, great, or if we have to re-advertise, let's get the re-advertising on the agenda for the next meeting then. Okay. Rich, is there anything else? Is anybody raising their hands or anything like that? I don't see anything. I've looked. Uh, Rich, okay. can you confirm that there's nothing in the public comment at newtowntownship.org, please? Um, Steve, yes. there was another person in that question and answer, and I think that we have this on the website, but there was only one of, I think that she, one of three scheduled town halls regarding the reassessments. Is there going to be a resumption of that using Zoom? My understanding is we recorded that, didn't we? We did. And that we, recording we, it is on the website and is available. Uh, and if you're having trouble getting it, let me know and I will make sure that you can get it. Steve, do we know if the county's still going ahead with the reassessment? My understanding, the last conversation I had with the county uh they actually did a um a press type conference that they did via very similar situation to what we're experiencing here um and when they did that uh one of the uh, council members spoke to that issue and it would require the judge to keep it from moving forward uh, they have requested from the judge that that be stopped. However, they're still moving forward with all the requirements as if the judge was not going to have it stopped because they don't know that the judge will. Um, they have a July timeframe to complete uh, the um, uh, com complete the um, the first, what they call the tentative or the, uh, I forget the exact word now, I'm sorry, it's drawing, I'm drawing a blank, but the, right now, this is not a required chance for you to appeal. 
right. I forget the word it is, and I have it written down, but I don't have it right in front of me. But it, you can do that. They have they by July first, they have to get out the official uh, the official assessments, and when they get that out, uh, then there will be a formal appeal period that everybody's entitled to go before a true hearing board. Um, and my understanding is the county will set up multiple hearing boards to do that. I'm guessing based on where we are today that those might be very similar to what you're sitting in right now. They, there might be four or five residents from the county that are sitting there hearing it and they will be, you know, it'll be a chance for you to do just what you're doing right here, but you would present probably very similar to what we're going to do on Thursday night for the zoning hearing board. Okay, thank you. If there's no further comments, then uh, we are in adjournment and I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to participate and please uh, stay safe. Our next meeting will be Monday, April 27th, uh, or likely than not in the same format as we are tonight. So again, thanks to everybody for participating and uh, have a great time. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.